Picture the scene from an alternate universe. It is 2019, Microsoft is building their own Linux kernel. They've also decided to build their default internet browser based on Google's Chromium project. They've then decided that it would be a great idea for Sony to build their PlayStation game streaming service on Microsoft Azure, and also that iPads would somehow become the perfect device to demo Office on. Actually, those are not statements from an alternate universe, it's just that Microsoft has changed a lot. So in the 51st episode of the Story Behind series, let's talk about why Microsoft went from being brutally competitive to wanting to partner with seemingly everyone. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I have a link for you to try out Premium for free, so hang out till the end. What comes to your mind when you think about Bill Gates, the world's most successful philanthropist, a friendly grandpa working to save the world, doing chill interviews with your favorite tech YouTubers? That seems to be the consensus now, but before he decided to spend 99% of his income on eradicating malaria and the like, he built one of the most successful tech companies in the world by being absolutely ruthless. Microsoft under Gates was so aggressive in killing off competitors that in 2001, they were slapped with the world's most iconic antitrust law case, and there are tons of online resources collecting all of the evil Microsoft has ever done, like this beauty right here. Classic examples include bleeding competitors dry in litigation, light stuff like blackmailing OEMs to exclude competing products, and my personal favorite, bribing Nigerian education suppliers to wipe Linux from school kids' laptops. <laughs> Yeah, the old Microsoft liked to get a little dirty. Not only did they destroy competitors with their famous embrace, extend and extinguish strategy, where they embraced a technology, added their own proprietary closed source software on top, and then killed off the more open standard, they also guarded their own technologies closely and wanted nobody to have access to them. Like how Gates made it clear in 1998 that he doesn't want competing Office programs to be able to open Microsoft Office documents under any circumstances. As a fun bonus, Steve Ballmer, his successor, reportedly straight up called Linux a cancer, although I think his intentions with this quote have been misrepresented a little. Either way, their famous Windows first and Windows only approach and their constant aggression meant that startups and developers were wary of them and that even industry titans like Adobe were afraid to license core technologies to them, like PDF for example, because they were afraid of the triple E threat. But in the last five years or so, Microsoft has started going through one of the most amazing transformations in modern company history. They've abandoned their Windows-only approach nearly entirely, they have started taking partnerships very seriously, and they have really started embracing open source software as well. In 2014, the newly appointed CEO Satya Nadella used his first public appearance to announce Office for iPads of all things, signaling that he would go on a warpath to move the company away from their old ways and open it up to partnerships. Too many mind-bending announcements have come out of this transition for me to go through all in a video, but the most important ones include Microsoft making most of its developer tools open source and available on nearly all platforms, buying GitHub, the largest platform for hosting open source projects, and then making it free to use for more users, embracing Linux by literally saying that they love it, shipping a Linux kernel on some Windows versions, integrating it with their cloud services, building their own Linux distributions to run on specialized devices, and even pledging Microsoft's over 60,000 patents to protect Linux systems others develop. They embraced Google's open source Chromium project for building Microsoft's new web browser, let Alexa come pre-installed on Windows machines, let Sony build their PlayStation game streaming service on Microsoft infrastructure, and brought all of their core apps and services to the web and competing platforms as well. That includes Office to do a dedicated Android launcher, which is actually pretty great, Android to PC syncing with your phone, and they're working to make Xbox Live work on iOS, Android, and even Nintendo Switch. Really, the change couldn't have been much more dramatic, and the cancers known to Microsoft as open source software and friendly partnerships have truly started infecting the patient. In just a few years, Microsoft now has around 80 very highly rated apps on Android alone. The company became the largest contributor to open source projects in the world, overtaking second place Google, at least according to the number of GitHub contributors. And instead of suing their competitors out of existence, they just started partnering with them now. 
Many people still doubt their sincerity. And for good reason. It should take the largest bully of the last couple of decades a lot of time to convince everyone that they've just suddenly turned friendly and want to become everyone's best friends. And it's also understandable that many think that these new partnerships are just an elaborate version of the embrace, extend, extinguish strategy. But since Satya has been on board, his direction has been remarkably consistent and people are starting to take him seriously. Some of the oldest, most die-hard critics claim that they forgive Microsoft as the evil masterminds have all retired. The developer community as a whole has slowly started seeing Microsoft as more of a partner, putting them in second place after Google for embracing open source, and competitors seem to be embracing their technologies too, which is a huge vote of confidence. I personally think that they're very sincere, but unlike what their PR department would like you to believe, I don't think they've just turned nice overnight. There are business reasons behind this, and Satya is just seeing things more clearly than the leaders that came before him. For years now, they have mostly been losing on the consumer front. Their aggressive obsession with Windows and building everything in-house was very profitable for decades, but meant that they missed out on all of the next big things. Smartphone, search, social media, e-commerce, all of them, while the PC business hit a ceiling and started stagnating. Microsoft was not able to kill the open source movement, the web, iOS, Android and the rest, which have all grown to be too big to ignore or suppress. So the company, even under Balmer, slowly started leaving consumer-facing markets and focusing more and more on becoming an enterprise service provider, supplying companies with servers, cloud services, enterprise software, and the like. And while apart from maybe Surface and a few other projects, Microsoft never really felt at home with consumers the way Apple and Google did, they did do very well in the enterprise space and managed to build up a huge and very profitable business relatively quickly. And it is this shift of them becoming a service provider for other companies that has really pushed them into this role of being a gentle giant, I guess. Them being trustworthy and not backstabbing every competitor and suing them out of existence, that's kind of a minimum requirement if they want other companies, especially their competitors, to trust their data and their business processes on them. And then these companies increasingly also have employees who use iPhones and Android devices. They have developers that need a Linux-like environment to code in, and they use open source tools like Docker and Kubernetes to build software in. As a full stack enterprise solution provider, Microsoft wants to facilitate all of those things, not just supply companies with Windows and Office and call it a day. They want to touch everything, and it is simply better business for them to have a competitor like Sony run Linux on Microsoft Azure than for Sony to not use Azure at all. And in that light, Microsoft's new direction is not charity or altruism, but simply good business. As a little bonus cherry on top, this positive image that they acquire by being friendly to other companies and to the open source communities, it really makes Microsoft a more attractive workplace as well. Software developers, UI and UX designers, you know, the people who design apps and websites and stuff, well, these are the ultimate scarce resources in today's economy. These people are extremely picky in deciding where they want to work, and whichever company can attract the best ones usually ends up winning. So for Microsoft to be attractive to those people is of very large strategic benefit. The flip side of this, of course, is that learning the skills to become a highly desired tech worker would be a strategic benefit to you. Skillshare has a whole category dedicated to UI and UX design, for example, with over 300,000 students and fantastic courses teaching you everything from simple stuff like what tools the pros use to design apps and how to use them, all the way up to advanced courses like this two and a half hour masterclass on becoming a UX designer from scratch. If design is not your thing, Skillshare also has over 25,000 classes on everything from software development to photography, video editing, business skills, and more. I promised that I would have a deal for you, and indeed the first 500 Tech Altar viewers to sign up using the link in the description below will get two months of premium access for free. So go there, sign up, and uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.